The Black Awakening Part 1 A Prophetic Future Unless those days are shortened, no flesh would be left. Jesus of Nazareth You could feel it in the air tonight. It had the aroma of blood and frenzy. The atmosphere was charged with it. It was menacing, murderous, and malevolent all in one, but clearly much more. The presence, an ancient presence of violence and evil, was so thick you could cut it with a knife. I could sense it was on. Everything seemed on edge and ready to erupt. For years I knew this dark night was coming. It was now at the door. Then I heard the first shots. I jumped up, went to the window to watch. Like always, I had the cable news, the internet, short wave, and the radio all on at the same time. At first, the explosions began far away. Then I could tell they were coming closer and closer. I had my family near me. We were praying and we did prepare. Immediately, the phone rang and a friend of mine was screaming at me on the other end. That thing, that subject, that seminar you taught on and warned us about. It's happening, isn't it? I can't locate my family, and all the lights are out. In the case he blasted. This person seemed angry at me. I thought of that phrase, don't shoot the messenger. Emails began pouring in with stories of crazy things. Shootings, explosions, screams, and people going raving mad everywhere. And I mean everywhere. News flashes were coming in. In the media, people were frantic. The sound of police sirens could be heard everywhere. This was clearly only the beginning. I just sat there, watching, waiting for the next thing. I knew much more would follow. At one police station, the seasoned captain ordered the SWAT team to gather. John was in the weapons room when he heard the shots. He quickly pulled his weapon and stepped into the hallway. He was shocked to see his longtime friend Joe firing his service revolver and hitting another officer. Before John would shoot, he yelled out to his friend, What in the heck are you doing? Are you crazy? Joe turned toward him, but it wasn't Joe. Or was it? It looked like him, but his eyes and contorted face showed a different demeanor, dark and menacing. It was hard to analyze in such a brief moment. Nothing at the police academy had prepared John for this. Joe's eyes were black and glazed over. His face was contorted, and that haunting grin was eerie and menacing. With a look of total confusion, Captain John paused. He shouldn't have. 
He looked at Joe hard as if to grasp for meaning. It was the wrong thing to do, but he didn't know what was standing in front of him. At that split second before John could pull the trigger, he heard that familiar crack. Joe fired first. John fell down to the ground in pain, bleeding and quickly dying. Joe rushed by John without saying a word. Joe had more work to do. The police station was in chaos. Weapons were drawn and cops were running everywhere. An explosion took out the weapons room and dispatch was down. Other officers scrambled and tried to regain order. What they didn't know yet was the fact that many, very many other local police stations were experiencing the same thing. Long-time good officers were, for no reason, firing upon their fellow peace officers. Sabotage and betrayal by what used to be trusted friends was crushing to say the least. With great sadness, I turned the old scanner down. I remember when I taught all this at a police academy, and no one seemed to get it. I turned back to the cable news, and again I watched. Fires were beginning to flare up everywhere. Firefighters were rushing to the big ones first. In some places, the firefighters were being shot at. They had to stand down. Explosions were witnessed at a number of churches. Some were on fire. There were people praying in one church when its walls came down. No one could help them. No one could do a thing. All the fire trucks were busy elsewhere. I could smell the thick, heavy smoke. It loomed over many trees of the city. It wasn't random. It wasn't an accident. Next it was government, financial, and buildings of mass transit that were hit. They all seemed like focused, targeted attacks. Surely these hits were all planned. It looked like a war zone. The information I had for years now told me it was. A war on society. A war on ideologies, cultures, our way of life, and all governmental rule. It was war on all who stood in their way. This, my dear reader, is a war against God. I continued to watch and pray. Other media updates came in. The news reporters were out on the streets. They kept trying to report, but people kept running by and yelling. They were screaming at one of them to get out now. Wanting to get the scoop and do his job, he stayed. He also lost his life. It seemed like anyone who was on the streets this first night was gunned down. No one seemed to help anyone else. Yes, my friend, this was only the first night. And like a controlled wave, this energized revolt continued hour after hour, time zone after time zone. Cars racing by were shot at. One car would steer and wreck right into another one as if it were aiming at it. Then the cameraman caught something live. If you didn't see it with your own eyes, you wouldn't have believed it. An injured mother was reaching back to check on her son after a collision with a small truck. The man of the truck got out with his gun in hand. He walked up to her car and unloaded his weapon killing her and her son. It was overkill. They were slaughtered. An old religious song was still playing on the radio in the dead lady's smashed car, something about an old rugged cross. This made the gunman's face contort and he began to growl. It was weird. It was eerie. The crazed man turned around toward the camera and began to charge it. The picture went blank. I continued to watch the clenched fist. I knew what this was. I knew they would show no mercy. I've seen them before. They are as cold 
as hell. When the phone rang again, I jumped and then smiled. It was the only phone. I got up to answer it, passing by a weapon on the chair in my home. I wondered if I would have to use it to protect my family. My friend on the other end of the line frantically told me what TV station to turn on and watch. The urgent reports they were giving was hailed by a government official. I didn't get her name. She was saying something about national security and homeland defense. Everyone had been ordered to stay indoors. They said they thought it was a planned event of terrorism, but they were not sure, clear. They told us to be calm, but they weren't. I watched. I knew who it was. <laughs> oh yes, I knew. I switched to another station. Gun battles raged. Citizens were being murdered. People were firing out of their windows at anyone who came near their homes. When government buildings were targeted again and bombed, U.S. leaders were taken underground to bunkers. One bunker in the Northeast was in trouble. Some Secret Service agents took the officials to what they thought was secure quarters with planned out safety protocols. Once the large door was shut at the secure bunker, the trusted agents changed at once, so quick, and turned on the senators. They gunned them all down. All of them. The new trucks caught up with this and finally filmed military vehicles and soldiers outside the entrance of the bunker. They were building a perimeter. Two soldiers were covered in white sheets. Reporters wouldn't or couldn't say why they had turned on their fellow soldiers. The other soldiers had to stop them. They had to shoot. It was the only way. The rogue soldiers didn't listen to commands anymore. They seemed possessed, crazed. No one could stop them with words. I have seen this before. The second day. When the lights flickered, I glanced at the clock. It was 5 a.m. I was tired, but very alert. The hot coffee helped. I knew it was far from over. Hell had a long, plotted out mission, and this time it would go global. No, this wasn't over. Not in the least. Friends who knew what we knew somehow made it to our house. Others who were supposed to come didn't make it. We began to share stories and information. We knew we needed to pray. We prayed long and hard against the evil. We covered everything. We prayed for law enforcement, the military, for leaders, and then for everyone we could. Some went around the grounds and prayed over all the land and the house. The presence of God seemed to embrace us. I remembered the part of the 23rd Psalm. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. We knew that no matter what happened, we were secure in Him. It was too bad for those who only had their crystals and cards. Their psi powers didn't help at all. Not with this. Those who were religious had no idea what to do. They were not helped out at all. We began to strategize how we could get to others. We wanted to help as many as possible. After all, we knew it was a war on everyone all over the world. Then we heard a loud knock on the back door. This time I grabbed my weapon. This wasn't in our prepared plan. A pastor and his family stood there embracing each other and were shaking with fright. 
The pastor was bleeding with a makeshift wrapping around his arm. Quickly, we brought them in. We knew who they were. They speedily told us their terrifying story. It was how I imagined it would be, and I listened carefully. About 2 a.m., they were watching out their upstairs windows. They kept noticing two individuals walking back and forth in front of their home. The pastor's wife thought they may need help. His daughter said she saw both men at the church the past couple of weeks. They seemed nice, she said. They asked me things, questions, you know, about us. Things like where we lived. Why didn't you say anything? cried the mother. Suddenly the men disappeared into the darkness. But where? What the pastor had feared happened. Before he could get downstairs, he heard the back door crash to the ground. Both men were in the house. The pastor and the father led his family down the hall into a room with a side window. They rolled the fire ladder down and began to descend. He went down last. Bullets burst through the locked bedroom door. One bullet caught him in the arm. He didn't bother to even look until he had his family in the van was racing down the street. They were on their way to my house. He too knew what I did. He was watching and waiting, but he didn't think his family would be targeted. Most Christian leaders didn't. And so many of them fell in one night. I stayed at the window and watched. I was ready for whoever would come. I knew they were out there. The pastor's son said he remembered the two men. He remembered that they were sitting in their car a few weeks ago across the street from the house taking pictures. Pictures? His sister questioned. Why pictures? Again, mom emotionally asked, Why didn't you tell us? The boy shrugged his shoulders. He had no answer. His dad put his good arm around him and comforted him. The pastor, dad, knew it wasn't the boy's job. The boy wouldn't have known. The pastor wished he would have seen it first. After all, he was warned that things like this were going to happen. He kept an eye out for this, but busy with many things to do, he just didn't catch it. They were here with us and safe for now. I wondered who else would show up, friend or foe. Maybe one of them. I watched. We were all watching. My mind surged with the thought. We are on the edge of the end of history. Still, I watched. As this evening had begun, so it was ending. It was all the same. Story after story of crazed individuals. People rushing around, killing people. Chaos and anarchy raged. It was like they were angry and insane looking. In every eyewitness case, people reported that the eyes were glassy black. The faces were contorted and you couldn't get their attention. They wouldn't talk to you or answer anyone. It seemed like something took control of them. Oh, yes. And I knew what it was. An ancient hate. And it was here, as never before in human history. After all, this would be their final attempt. How anyone, any being, could think that they could kill God is beyond me. Some people even reported hearing weird sounds like tones when it all began. Others said they could feel evil racing through the air. It seems as if you could see it like smoke in the dark skies. One moment these people were talking, working, laughing. Then in a flash they switched. They changed. They dropped everything and just left. 
Some turned cars around and sped towards an unknown destination. Dads left their homes. People left buildings. And without notice, people left work. These people just dropped what they were doing and took off. Many were later seen on streets shooting and killing. Some families were murdered by one of their own. You couldn't trust anyone. I closed my eyes and remembered back to the days when we tried to help these people. Some got free, but just as many didn't. Most people thought that they were sad victims of mind control and ritual abuse or something weird like that. But I knew very well that not all of them saw themselves as victims. They were what they were supposed to be and loved it. They told me that they had worked on this for many years and many of them vowed they wouldn't give up their hard fought for abilities. The rituals they held in deep secrecy were to prepare them and empower them. They were building up the energies and were clothed with power, but not from on high. Like in the days of Manasseh, innocent blood was shed from one end of the country to the other. Their demons were dancing in the secret circles. Ancient secret languages were spoken. Twilight language. I couldn't get it out of my mind. Not for the moment. Not even for the rest of the night. All those long nights we hunted and searched for the unholy places where these robed breeders were working their dark magic. We found the signs and the symbols. We interrupted some of them. It surprised and angered them that anyone would dare hunt them. They cling to undying revenge. They vow, threaten, and say they have a long arm. And like Satan himself, they never forgot. I didn't either, but for a different reason. I shook my head as if trying to relieve myself of these memories of their atrocities. I needed to watch. Most of this dark night did not. Most of the people at my house were quiet. The kids were playing downstairs. Others were praying intensely. Not in fear, but fiercely praying against that dark presence they felt. I joined them as I watched. Like in the days of Nehemiah, a sword in one hand and a brick in the other. Defend and build. Nehemiah was a great leader in a dangerous environment. We should have learned more from him. I wondered if most believers were ready for this. Would they hold true? Did the church prepare witnesses or spectators? Would they hide behind the rocks or fight Goliath? face to face. Another memory quickly flashed to my mind. The letter. I literally ran down to my study center to look for it. It was a letter from a ruddy, red-haired girl. She gave it to me one morning at church. It was her first time there, and she had no idea that I was involved in hunting this old, wicked agenda. The letter she gave me years before matched a story that was just shown on the BBC. It was filmed by whom I don't know. There was a man in what looked like a soldier's uniform. He held a machete-like weapon over a lady's head, screaming at her to turn. There was an old woman whose hands were behind her. In her right hand... She clutched an old used Bible. It was clear she wouldn't do as she was commanded. As the madman drew back his weapon, she cried, No, son, don't do it. It's me. 
your mother. Tears streamed down her face as she gazed at what looked like her son. But it wasn't really him. Oh, it was his body, all right. But it wasn't his personality. He swung the weapon in one motion right there on global TV. He, or whoever it was, really had no idea that it was his own mother's head that rolled off. A soldier's uniform with that patch, the globe with two lightning bolts through it, could not yet be identified. He didn't even flinch. Like a remote-controlled car, he did what the energized impulses in his head drove him to do. His facial expression seemed to beam with a sick satisfaction. Evil loves this twisted lawlessness. Evil twists everything. It burns to make right wrong and wrong right. I stopped looking for the letter when I heard someone yelling my name. I was needed upstairs to watch. Evening came and went. The stories continued to build. Some of these people who switched went to what seemed like planned or designated places. They seemed to know exactly what to do. It was there that they picked up their hidden weapons, met up with others who were waiting for them, and affirmed their orders. There were no hugs or handshakes. It was all as cold as Arctic ice. They gave no room for mistakes. These people were gloves with someone else's hand on the inside. As the stories continued, bewildered people testified on the news. They weren't into guns and stuff. They just returned to work and homes and began shooting people. They were looking for them and slinging them out. They passed by others who were cringing in fear. It seemed like they knew what they wanted or who they wanted. There was no sense of feeling or emotion in them. They were cold and hard and mean. Some people tried to be heroes and stop them. But the crazed individuals leveled the would-be helpers without hesitation. At night it was worse. There were more and more of them. It wasn't safe to go out. Not at all. Prayers acknowledged that only God could crush such a vile evil that was in them. Eventually, another day would dawn and the end of this menace would come forever. The third day. The next day was long and busy. We all felt rushed. We had to stop, pray, and seek guidance. When night began, we realized this was all happening too quick. The Nazis had a thing called Blitzkrieg, or lightning warfare. Dark left hand path occultists Use this in their curses against their foes. They were by far more advanced and sophisticated than anyone could or would ever believe. And this reminded me of the biblical parable of the sower and the seed. The Son of God came during the day and unleashed his word, a seed that if accepted would transform a life for eternity. In the same story, the evil one only came out at night copying and counterfeiting the other one and his kingdom. He sowed his seed too. He birthed his jagged tares at night in thick secrecy. They were like Janus, the two-faced Roman god. One face for the public and the real one concealed except at the late night meetings. And now, they're here, among us, as the imposed and forged sinister selves. 
Just then, some of the phone lines went down, though a few specialty cell phones were still working. Calls came in continuously. Some were pleas for help. Others were hang-up calls. Sound on their end. They just listened to our voices. It was like someone was calling to see who, if anyone, was at home. It was then I watched the most and waited. I just started singing old hymns about faith and steadfastness. Again, it was as if God embraced me. His embrace of power always makes me fierce and ready to act. The news showed that the fires were still burning. The streets were deserted in most areas. It looked like a natural disaster. I wondered were, where all the people had gone. In other places, the battle continued. News reports said some national armies were in skirmishes and that even planes were dropping bombs. It seemed like every hour you heard an explosion or shots fired. Sometimes even a scream or two could be heard, but then they'd abruptly stop. I watched all the more. I waited and prayed. God's power seemed to charge the prayers of everyone here as never before. He knew this was coming. It was clear that even within government and law enforcement offices, panic ruled. Buildings were sabotaged, people were betrayed. All trust was breaking down. The waterworks building was on fire too. No one would drink the public water. Some heard stories of the water being poisoned. I hope we had stored enough. The media networks were pouring on the news reports. It was painful to hear any more. It was all overwhelming. But we had to be aware. We had to be brave. And needed to pray hard. The only radio station still on gave us a spotty report of a large number of people in a mall who were all found dead. Their eyes were bloody and their faces puffy. Chemical response teams were on the scene. Even the media people had gas masks on. They told everyone to evacuate. This wasn't a chemical spill, it was a biochemical weapons released by them. I wondered if it was the dreaded white powder when they said anthrax or something like that. Crush this evil to hell, I yelled. God will end this. I hope that's okay. It's too much. I yelled again. I wish we had never let this evil in. Humanity was so stupid, and we lost, in the beginning and this end of history. I was energized by the Spirit of God when I realized that the judgment of God, so many balked at, would be the only sure thing to end this alienation, this menacing evil, this soul-damning madness forever. Never would this black flame touch us or anyone again. Then, just as we knew what would happen, martial law was declared, but who knows by whom. At this moment, we all wondered who was calling the shots. Military soldiers were pouring out of trucks. Helicopters were over one area of the city for a long time. Multiple shots were fired. Suddenly, it all escalated. What some feared happened. Some sort of rocket flew from the ground level and hit the helicopter. Then the thing exploded all over the place. Where did they get that? The radio announcer yelled. Police and SWAT teams were dispatched over the area. Soldiers were running. 
Calls came in and confirmed the rocket had come from a warehouse. The battle was on. SWAT teams fired on the three men who had the weapon. Though they were wearing thick body armor, two of the crazies were killed instantly, and the third was wounded and grabbed by a number of officers. This one had body armor on as well, and it was clear that he was ready for a fight, even with trained officers and soldiers. He had those black, glassy eyes and that weird, contorted, menacing face. They began to interrogate him immediately. He wouldn't answer them. He just stared as if he was looking at something or listening to someone else. They should have kept their eye on this one. These madmen don't stop until someone stops them permanently. The officers grew weary and frustrated. They looked away and shouldn't have. This eerie man seized the moment and quickly grabbed an officer and took his weapon. It all happened so fast. All these super soldiers, as some were calling them, were quick. He didn't shoot the cop, though. He put the gun to his own head and then yelled out in what sounded like a deep, growling German accent. We are the legions who will rule the earth. He pulled the trigger as he laughed loudly. His body dropped to the ground and he was dead immediately. All the officers just looked at each other in disbelief. When I saw the tape of this on the cable news, I knew that the energized programming and mind control I was told about was working and driving them. Media people and others fearfully wondered, who in Hades were these crazies? These are the chosen ones. At least that's what they called themselves. Few knew this title. It was their badge of honor to be a chosen one. They were in hiding for years. Secret weapons, some good men said. They were blended into society so well. Unless you knew, I mean really knew. It was almost impossible to detect them. They were all placed so deep in their assigned areas. As I looked out the window toward the city, I watched for them. I knew they were there and had been watching us for a long time. The crazies, as media called them, were really the sleeper soldiers no one wanted to hear about. Everyone had been distracted by the other radical terrorists for so long, I wondered whether that was a planned distraction. These, were, these sleepers were waiting in a satanic shadow for a very long time, waiting for their call to come in. Something had to happen to spark all of them into this perverse slaughter, this killing field. It wasn't a war or troops from another nation. It was more like a civil war, a civil butchering. They needed a call, a trigger, or a cue to activate what was buried deep within them. The sleeper personalities that were created in them since childhood were like zombies lying in their carved out inner tombs. They call or trigger that activated them was something spiritual, powerfully supernatural, and technical, all combined. Some came from the old rogue military black ops projects. They called them monarchs. It's a word many of them also used. An old friend once said to me, Did you know that monarch butterflies are the only insects that migrated to every continent on the earth? I knew that he meant that these chosen ones were planted everywhere. Some of them told me about the military labs underground. The experiments were filled with torture and human cruelty. These doctors knew how to do the doubling 
just like the old Nazis. And, oh, yes, many of them talked about a Dr. Green. It was all hidden and extremely secret. The secrecy wasn't all threats and fear. There was a thick, dark power that covered them. They did this, well, they did this well with help of hell itself. Secrecy was their law. To tell was to die. Like the Nazis, only a thousand times worse. It was originated and designed by a corrupted intelligence, and it wasn't human. They came from a long line of older European generations, family bloodlines. They jeered. There's power in the blood. The blood was sacred to them in a sick way. They waited so long. According to them, their time had come. Their rise to power and rule was here. They named this day, this very evil hour. This is their thing alone. This was their project. They called it the Black Awakening. It was a leveling of everything. A leveling that would open the doors to total control for a new order. They're all about a new order, you know. And don't forget, even if you don't believe in an Antichrist, they do. A leader of supernatural origin. It was to be a global coup, but who really believed it was possible? They did. This was a takeover, striking every area of society and collapsing everything. That was the goal. They would then replace it with theirs, a new order out of the chaos they arrogantly boasted, satanic phoenix rising. The chosen ones are here. The Black Awakening is here, and they are the legions, the demonized man said. Legions. The Fourth Day I had seen those black glassy eyes so many times. I had worked with Many of them before. I saw them change before my very eyes. I talked with many of these purposely created and highly trained personalities. They were on the inside, on a sub-level. I also talked to the sleepers within. And yes, God showed us how to wake them up too. When they stared at me, eye to eye, I could see an ominous ancient hatred. It seemed as if many were looking all at once. Those eyes, those eyes seemed to be telescopes that hell from a distance was looking through and revenge was burning in their mutated DNA. They were the transmuted in this state, not fully human. I heard their rants, their claims, their plans, their various voices. There were so many of them on the inside. Didn't anyone ever ask where they came from? There are millions of them. Not just here, but in other nations. These multiples, the chosen ones, began showing up just 25 years ago, but this was older than that. It was a dream in the heart of the fallen cherub himself. Who did this? Who forged these warriors? Didn't anyone put the pieces of the puzzle together? I watched many of them for years before this day occurred. Many of them warned me and mocked my faith. I tried to do my best. I wished I had done more. I knew I couldn't stop it. But in the name of God, I loved. I would do all I could. I also knew there would be an answer from the throne of grace. Some of these chosen ones who tried to get away from their creators and handlers told us the scary stories of their upbringing. Their inner personalities told us their beliefs, 
their secrets and their plans. Thousands of horror stories floated to the surface in the public. Books, tapes, and conferences try to convey the message of a great perversion and a terrible evil. If you really listened, these victims were forged by solid evil, but most of the sciences were blinded by supernatural shade, a blinding so advanced they didn't even scratch the surface. An unaided mind couldn't perceive what this was all about. The dark rituals they did really had an effect on them. It was to keep them hidden and cloaked until this chaotic awakening dawned. I see that it did cloak them. All of their faculties seemed to be frozen. They were the chosen ones. Chosen by Satan himself. That's what they said. Chosen to be soldiers. Chosen spiritually. Chosen to be special. Or so they were told. They were married to the beast. They claimed they had the mark. They vowed to rule the earth. Some told me they could not and would not ever turn back from their privileged positions. Their created inner personalities vowed loyalty to an ancient twisted master. They were birthed in powerful and very painful demonic blood rituals. Their blood had power too, they said. They were superior, at least in their own eyes. They claimed they had abilities beyond us weak, inferior humans. They were the troops of a new order. They were seeking a spiritual evolution of humanity. They were plotting two massive spiritual planetary waves, supernatural shock waves that would grip leaders and mold millions. This would come from very special rituals. Rituals hidden for centuries, but now upon us. They and their leaders were waiting to snatch control. Total control. They would come from the shadows everywhere. But who believed the reports? Their stories of satanic ritual abuse. Ancient rituals. Dark sayings and spirits or, or hardly what any therapist wanted to talk about. Who wanted to lose their job, huh? Who wanted to spend the time needed for these victims? <laughs> Denial. Denial and skepticism can destroy us. I had tracked them for many years. I confronted some of them. Some of them confronted me. They had a hate that came from way back but what they really lacked was information they were so one-sided the words of god were off limit to them they were not permitted to read it for themselves they weren't supposed to talk to others about their roles they were controlled in every way control was the key they boasted this to me so many times. They really believed they could have it all, rule it all. They actually believed they could take, yes, even take the seat of God. Believe it or not, they thought they found a way to kill God. <laughs> I wondered who would join this masqueraded globalist agenda. Evil was on the loose, like a big bloody bull in a china shop. An old ancient twisted presence had now broken loose. In the past it was sneaky and in the dark. We were like a frog being cooked in the rising heat of a pot of water. Now it came all at once, like a bat out of hell. More calls on the cell phones came in. More news flashes. It was finally clear to all. This terror was occurring all over the United States, in every city, and in every place. Most were shocked and horrified to hear it was happening in Canada, England, and all over Europe. 
How could this be so vast? Nations were blaming each other. All were on alert. Warplanes were in the skies. The red phones were buzzing. Calls for calm and caution were given by many. It seemed like no one was in control. No one had a handle on it. Governments were putting on a face of control, but they couldn't even control what was happening from within. Sabotage and deadly betrayal were daily realities. Nations shook as leaders died mysterious deaths. Many thought the end of the world had come. The end of something had. <sighs> the truth is, this black awakening was not the end. For them, it was just the beginning. The beginning of their public agenda. Their final solution times a thousand. I stood opposed to it all, also stood energized by the truth knowing that another ancient one, the Ancient of Days, would soon take his place. As these days passed, only those prepared could stay inside. Their food and water supplies were stocked, praying, waiting, and watching were the actions of the wise. The Bible became important to many now. People search for that old copy in the house. Go to the book of Daniel, someone said. Others said, let's study 2 Thessalonians 2. While others wanted to read the book of Revelation, the prophecies of a great rebellion, a great catastrophic chaos had been tragically overlooked. Most books on prophecy and the study guides were totally lacking in this regard, but it was there all along. God gave us many warnings. He did it to save as many as possible. He warned us to prepare us, to prepare his people to be ready. Even in this crisis, the light of God's grace was piercing, penetrating, and unstoppable. There were even stories of whole households turning to God. Now it seemed that millions wanted the one they denied by their past choices. I once again sang Amazing Grace as I realized that God is not willing for anyone to perish. Someone in the room raised their voice and said, Jesus spoke more on deception in the scriptures than on the rapture. I agreed with them. As some were discussing the Bible, I listened and I kept watching. Someone grabbed me and took me to a security monitor for the property. It looked like a little woman hiding behind a tree. She ran to the front of the house and hit the door. I opened the big thick door and saw a woman shaking as if she were cold. I asked what her name was. Someone behind me asked, uh, who is she? As I leaned back to hear what they said, in a flash, a familiar voice to me said, She's here to kill you. As I turned back to the frail lady, a knife went past my face and stuck in the door. Before I could move again, a shot was fired. She fell. A soldier came and said, I couldn't let her do it, Pastor. I just couldn't. I looked at her and him again and again. She was one of them. A chosen one. We had tried to help her in the past, but she never turned to the one who would love her and free her. No one trusted her. They all discerned she had a seductive plot. I refused to work with her. She had such hatred. I thought I might see her again. I wished she would have turned to the light of heaven. To Christ. A soldier took her body away and said, uh, God will protect you. Close your door now, brother. His smile had the presence of the king of heaven in it. Many of us slept a few hours. We had real rest. The fifth day. 
In the morning, food was prepared. More friends arrived. I smiled for the first time in days when the thoughts of God of heaven, my friend, came to my mind. He went to the cross and gave his life. On that old wooden cross, he blasted to pieces death and the reign of evil. His blood had the power to set us free, cleanse and heal us forever. Indestructible immortality was in his words, and love was expressed at that cross. I reflected on what his power wielded. This lamb would once again run circles around the ancient dragon. I watched and I worshipped. The presence of his kingdom filled me. Only this kingdom had a king who lived and died for me and for the freedom of humankind. There was no one like him. The empty trinkets of the modern spirituality movements were clearly not saving anyone. That counterfeit stuff only pushed its adherents closer to the lie that was to come. Many would not feel the unalterable betrayal until it was too late. I wasn't watching for the evil anymore. I was watching for the working of a sovereign who really called the final play. But it wasn't over yet. Not by a long shot. At my house, some slept. Most were trying to bide their time. Others in the city who were breaking military curfew searched for food and weapons. Looting was rampant. You could feel the darkness in the streets and the skies. There was killing, stealing, and destruction. And so many dead bodies were around that the smell was unavoidable. You couldn't hide from that smell or the fear. Like a satanic ritual that seeks human fear and torture, the demons came through this chaos. It was a doorway for darkness. Humanity was unraveling. Nothing seemed to matter except survival. As I watched the news on TV, leaders were speculating on the answer to the who, what, and why. But I knew. Many of us did. We knew that control and peace would come, but not from these chosen ones or their leaders. There would be a long-planned, fabricated peace, a mask, a counterfeit. The finite evil one doesn't have the same ability as the infinite Prince of Peace. I wish many knew what was behind that mask. An ancient wickedness, a twisted presence, an unimaginable, maddening passion fueled this fallen being. Oh, and he had power over people, all right. Over those who let him. He was a counterfeit. Everything he did or planned was a pale copy of on thin ice. He was a wannabe. Man scoffed at his being real, let alone God's existence. But where are they now? Where are their diatribes? Dust in the wind. No one's listening to them anymore. Helpless. The old intellectuals only wait for someone, anyone, to save them. This extra-dimensional deception would have had a deafening grip on the minds, hearts, and spirits of all those who rejected the truth. The evil one was too strong for those whose lives were unaided by the Spirit of God. They were not watching. They couldn't. The Sixth Day The early morning of the sixth day came almost unannounced. After taking a quick shower, I was asked to come to the Bible study going on at breakfast. A young girl I knew very well was smiling at me. She had that familiar look of, guess what I know that you don't, Daddy. <laughs> Just say it, Jitterbug, I said with a smile. 
Dad, did you know it took six days for God to create the world? <laughs> yes, I said. It was all good. Can I finish? She said with shoulders slumped. And again I smiled. She quickly surmised that God took six days to create this world in beauty and order, and on the seventh day, he rested from his work and enjoyed all that was made. Look, she chirped, this thing, the black awakening, has gone for days, and today is the sixth. Will it all stop tomorrow? On the seventh day, will the evil one rest in a twisted glee, or will it be the time of his appearing? Then she quickly added, But this wasn't a creation like God's. It's a twisted, chaotic mess. A massed recreation. The enemy is here to ruin it, she proclaimed. We all stopped, and I got it. I said, I got it. Even the timetables... Everything God says and does, the twisted one seeks to redo in his own plagiaristic way. Only look at his results. Everything he touches dies and turns ugly. Would the next day bring the rest everyone asked for? If so, what kind, my daughter had questioned. The massed peace and order would begin in Europe. We knew that the United Nations, or whatever they were called now, whatever they called themselves, would convene and begin giving the orders. They were stable, or so it seemed. The crazy, glassy, black-eyed individuals were being dealt with. It seemed they were able to stop the chosen ones. The crazies were disappearing according to the media. What they didn't tell us was the fact that most of the glassy-eyed ones were blowing their own brains out. They all seemed to do it around the same time. It was weird. Like it was planned. Reports came in from everywhere. People said they heard the same weird sound again, or what seemed like a sound. They heard this sound over the airwaves, as they did when all this first began. I remember that... The weird sound was the same on TV, the radio, and the web. You had to listen very closely. The inner sleepers heard it crystal clear. The sound was like a low pulse thumping and thumping again and again. But it wasn't just about the sound. It was the dark powers that piggybacked the hum. Some said it was like many bursts of the same sound. Electric, magnetic, microwave, no one knew for sure. It only affected those crazed ones. The first time it occurred six days ago, that which was asleep in them woke up with a fierce appetite, an appetite for blood and death. Their minds and hearts were fixed. They had to do the job they were tempered for. Now they had to do another job. Most of the sub-personalities didn't know this one. It was an energized, programmed part of them. Suicide meant nothing to them. They just did it and dropped. For the sinister leaders, it meant these satanic assassins were silenced and out of the way. To the man behind the curtain, the plan was working. The super army was sadly expendable. No medals, no funerals, only silence. How sad for them. We still watched. We were ready with a plan of our own. As peace and order rose in the European nations, they called on the rest of the world to listen to them. Actually, they were demanding it. For the sake of the world, they said. They offered help. They said they gained access to a few of the U.S. military bases. One in Montana was taken over by these chosen ones. They had been there as sleepers for some time. 
this new UN only offered a masked hope for all. Overnight, they seemed to emerge strong. Over there, leaders of government, military, religion, all spoke the same message. It was like they were all on the same wavelength. It was so supernatural, like heavy, dark energy. In Europe, there had to have been a growing disdain for the United States. They had, uh, they had long had a desire to see us join them, to come of age, to quit resisting and being so independent. Only when U.S. officials agreed with the new powerfully appealing European rulers did that same sound, the bursts, pulses, begin here in America. I watched on TV as those glossy black-eyed madmen and women went haywire and destroyed themselves. They just stopped what they were doing, even letting their victims go. The FBI and military types wanted them. They wanted to know who was behind it all, how it all came about. But you couldn't convince any of these chosen ones at that time. You can only hold them and pray for a breakthrough. All of them began shooting themselves, and if they weren't armed, they began jumping off bridges or out of windows. They were as expert and good at killing themselves as they had been killing their targets. And they slipped into eternity, but not on the right side of it. Again, how terribly sad for them. The Seventh Day Gone were the sirens, the fire, and the frenzy. It seemed that overnight it was over. Well, at least, it seemed that way. There was a weird peace in the midst of the cleanup. We knew it was a mask. That the real face of things was still, well, behind the curtain. The U.S. didn't want anyone to know that we were in such a level of deep trouble. Some communications were down, the electric grids were offline, many of the national weapon systems were sabotaged and unusable for the moment. The U.S. was weak, like an injured body that just came from a wreck. We were in need of repair and healing. The U.S. was not ready for a global war. This vulnerability was just what the Dark Ones wanted. The chaos was released only to cause a collapse, a catastrophic collapse, indeed. They didn't want to destroy the United States. Like Hitler himself, they had plans for us, too. They just wanted to incapacitate the U.S. They, they wanted us helpless and paralyzed, like a snake that paralyzes its victims before it's eaten alive. They didn't want us, this old superpower, to dare to intervene with the new alliance that formed in Europe. This new order of nations came together so fast. No one knew how. It must have been planned. It had to have had deep secrets all along. <laughs> Talk about a shadow government. Those who were coming to power and rule, now had been waiting in the shadows all along. They were the self-proclaimed elitists that so many had written about. Money, power, and self-exaltation. They are so twisted. The ancient plan was moving forward, actually blazing ahead. The USA was down and unable to muscle its way into that old but new European scene. Those who unleashed the Chosen Ones, those real Luciferians, were old Illuminists. They were ready to unleash the next phase. Those same leaders would bring their man to the forefront. Soon a voice like none in world history would be heard. It would be the voice of an ancient hate, a voice the angels heard long ago, 
up in the heavenlies and long before it reached here. As millions seemed to be turning to God, more seemed to be mad at him. And once again they blamed God. All the while the devil hits them in the face. How stupid indeed. I know more than ever that God knows all things and that there is a war going on. What Satan could not do in the heavenlies was sought at the birth of Christ. Kill God is the dark code. Three thousand years ago the Spirit of God painted the picture of this and the next few years. In that old Psalm 2, God asks why and so do I. Have you read that old psalm? It's chapter 2. It was written long ago, but was meant for this day. Once again, God gives the heads up. Once again, God seeks to save us. Will the leaders, nations, and masses of people believe God or believe a wannabe? <laughs> Conspiracy. Oh, it's real, my dear reader. It's real. I have to stop. I have to go now. There's someone in the woods coming this way. Russ Dizdar, 2009.